Hi, I'm Joe Cochran with NorthlineExpress.com, and in this video series, I'm going to show you how to install the DuraPlus chimney system in a flat ceiling supported through the roof installation. Okay, so your first step is going to be to find the center point between your trusses and mark it so that you can install your round ceiling support. Now, okay, so to find that spot in your ceiling, the first thing you have to do is check the clearances on the back of your stove and get your stove into the position where you think you're going to want to install it. I say where you think because once you get up there you might find that the stove is three or four inches to the left or right to be able to get centered in between those trusses so you may end up having to adjust the stove a little bit. But I already took my measurements and made sure that we're good on our clearances to the back of the stove. I've marked and measured from the wall to the center point on my stove for that collar and now we're going to go up and we're going to uh, mark the ceiling to that same point and start to get an idea if we're centered or not. Alright so here we are up at the ceiling. Now remember we measured from the wall out to the center of our collar on the stove was 24 inches. We're going to just make a small mark up here at 24 inches out. And that's where we're going to start with our plumb bob. Now, I'm just kind of guessing where we are here. And we'll just have to move it around until we get close. So, we'll drop this down. Try to keep it from swinging all over like crazy. Get that about into the center. And that's right about where our mark is. So, I'm going to go ahead and... Just adjust that mark a little bit out, a little bit further from where I had it. You know, that could be because our, our wall might slant out a little bit and bring us away. Um, that's why you really got to double check that. All right, we're going to go ahead and get our drill. We're going to make our first hole in the ceiling. We'll start to check upstairs to make sure that we're centered in the joists so that we can start to cut that opening. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the, hole, the first hole, the test hole in the ceiling so that we can go back up in the attic and check if we're in between the two joists, make sure that our stud finder was on. Now, little tip for you, the easiest way to do this is to take an old coat hanger, trim off the ends, sometimes it can be hard to find these old wire coat hangers, but trim those off and what we'll do so we'll actually put this in our drill and use it as our drill bit. And the reason I do that is because number one, it's really long so I can get it up in there. It'll get through my insulation and stick up in there so I can actually see where it is. I'm not hunting all over for it. Also, it leaves a nice small hole in the drywall. If I'm wrong and I've got to shift it over and it isn't covered by where my hole is going to actually end up being, I don't have a big hole to patch. So let's go ahead and get that in there. Now usually that'll just hold up there like that. And so now we're going to go up in the attic, we're going to see where that's at. We'll make sure it's in between or centered in between two joists. If not, we'll go ahead and adjust from there. Okay, so we've got the insulation peeled back here. Again, we've got a better look of the uh, hole that we drilled and we can see that we're 24 inch on center here is our joist or our trusses or whatever we want to call them. So we're about oh, a little less than an inch away from center. So realistically, we might be able to just leave it where it is. And the way we're going to tell that is just to kind of eyeball this, put it upside down here. We'll get an eyeball of center where this is. And as you can see, I've got plenty of room on the edge, so I don't even need to adjust the hole or, or move this at all. I think we're gonna be good just where it is. So I'm gonna get this approximately to where my opening here is centered. I can go ahead and pull that out. We're gonna take our pen, and we're gonna mark this hole around, and we're gonna go ahead and start cutting the opening. Now, I usually tend to start cutting from the top down, and then I'll finish it off from the bottom. So we'll go ahead and get that started, and we'll see you back in a minute. 
All right, so we've got the, coal, the hole pretty much cut out. I left about two inches to finish when we get downstairs so that the core doesn't fall out and hit the stove. The last thing I'm gonna do though, before we go down there, is measure the space because we are gonna have to frame this in. So we wanna get that measurement. And we are 22 and a half inches. So we know that we need to cut two two by sixes, 22 and a half inches here and across there so that we can get our core for framing this in. The other dimensions, as far as the two by fours will run across that direction, we can get from our support box downstairs. So we'll go ahead and get that for you and we'll see you downstairs. Okay, so now that we've got the hole cut out in the ceiling, we're gonna go ahead and build our frame to install our round ceiling support box. We've already measured the distance between those trusses and I think it was about 22 and a half inches. So we're gonna cut two two by sixes that are at 22 and a half inches. And for Dura Plus, our round ceiling support is 14 inches in diameter. So we're gonna cut two other sections of two by six at 14 inches in length. And we'll go ahead and uh, mount that out. We'll frame out the box. We'll get it installed into those trusses and then we can install the round ceiling support box. Okay, now that we've got the frame installed, we're gonna actually install the round ceiling support itself. Now, when you're installing this, the keys to uh, keep in mind here is that the bottom of the round ceiling support has to extend at least three inches down past your ceiling, which is uh, just to get your clearance to combustible materials on that. And so there's a ring around the top of the round ceiling support box, and that needs to be about level with your drywall on the top. As you lower that down, you'll wanna get one screw driven into the side to hold it in place, and then go ahead and check with your level in both directions to make sure that you get it level and secure before you finish uh, securing it with the screws. Each side needs at least two to three, uh, number eight, inch and a half to two inch wood screws to actually secure this to the framing material. We've got our round ceiling support installed, but we don't have enough height between our frame and our roof to install the attic insulation shield. Technically you need 15 inches of height and we're at 14 inches on the front and only about seven inches in the back. So there's no way that we could install that attic insulation shield without hitting the roof and you can't cut it down by code. So what we're gonna have to do is actually build a wooden frame around the outside of this framed in box that goes from the frames here up to the roof to help totally enclose that chimney so that there's no chance of debris or insulation falling down in there getting up next to the chimney. So we're gonna take some measurements and uh, we'll show you how to cut that out and install it as we go. Okay, we're back up here. We've got our panels cut for our uh, enclosure here. I'm gonna go ahead and start setting it up and getting things put together. So first thing we're gonna do is we cut this back panel we just used quarter inch particle board here. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Remember, it doesn't have to even be a, a non-combustible material. You can use wood like this because we're gonna keep it outside of that two inch clearance to the combustible materials that the Dura Plus and class, most Class A pipe um, requires. So, go ahead and set this back in here. You can see it takes us right up to the roof line. We cut out a few of these two by twos I'm going to use these to actually screw um, everything together. So I'm going to just mark the placement of that. Again, you can see the inside of our framing meets our two inch clearance to combustible. So as long as we line this up so that everything's on the outside, our panels, then we should be in good shape. So go ahead and just line this up real quick. And I'm just marking those spots so that I can screw these blocks to this back panel and get that installed. So we'll go ahead and screw these on now. It doesn't have to look pretty, it just has to do the job. So. Okay, so we've got our blocks 
attached. Go ahead and just test this out one more time. Make sure that we're lined up good. Looks like we're all set. Okay, so our side panels are going to push right up against those blocks on each side and just get mounted like so. So I'm going to reach back there and screw those in real quick. Okay, so we're all set. We've got our enclosure built. You can see that it goes right from the ground up to the roof, all the way around on all sides. It'll keep any debris out. It'll keep insulation from getting pushed up against it. And it's gonna maintain our two inch clearance to combustibles through that pipe as it passes from our round ceiling support and up through our roof. So easy as that. We're back on the roof. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to install your roof flashing. You see we've cut our hole, our chimney pipe's gonna pass through there. We've already checked to make sure that we've got our two inch clearance to combustibles all the way around the pipe once it's installed. And so now we're gonna put our flashing in. Now the first thing you wanna do once the hole's cut is just start to pop some of these shingles up. They are gonna be nailed down underneath here and then they're, the tar line there is what holds them down. So we've already popped up the first row. This here, this top row. I like to come about halfway down if I can to um, just help secure it and, and help it stay leak free. So I'm gonna pop this second row off and just taking a flat bar, just kind of prying them off. It's kind of warm today, so you gotta be extra careful because they'll tear easy. And we're just peeling them off of that tar line and then we're gonna go up underneath and pop through any nails that are holding on. Same with this side. Oh, we already got that side good. Okay, now, the next thing we wanna do is test fit your flashing to make sure that it lines up good. So, we're gonna start to slide that underneath those shingles that we popped free. I've got to get this one here too. Just take your time and work it under there. If you run into anything, it's probably a nail. So you just need to get under it. Pop it loose. Okay, so we've got it under there. Now, our shingles are kind of riding up the back side of it. That's okay, we'll address that in a moment. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and check that we've got it centered. So I'm gonna need to grab that piece of pipe. We'll send it down the, the uh, flashing itself, lock it into place. We'll make sure this is centered, and then we'll go ahead and secure it to the roof. Okay, so I'm just checking here to make sure we're straight across that bottom shingle. Looks pretty level and even. We'll go ahead and start to secure the flashing down here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and silicone the flashing down. Now the key is to get up as high as you can underneath these shingles to get underneath the flashing. And I like to put a generous bead all the way down underneath the flashing. I try to get as far under it as I can. This is just kind of the safety bead. We're gonna go ahead and actually put another one on this outside edge as well. But, you know, when you're dealing with holes in the roof, it's always best to have an element of a backup there. Okay, so we're gonna go 
Okay, I'm just kind of press that in. It's going to give us that initial seal. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put some nails in it. You don't need to go crazy with them. About a half inch or so in from the outer edge. And I go one about every four inches or so. All right, once you've got all your nails in, you want to go ahead and silicone each nail. Again, we're just trying to keep any water from getting into the roof. Put a generous bead all the way around it. And as we make our way to the other side of the flashing, we're also going to go ahead and put our final bead all the way around the flashing itself. Make special effort to get a little bit of that silicone underneath each of the shingles as you go under the ridges as well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and install our storm collar now. Now the storm collars come in adjustable sizes. I think they fit up to eight or 10 inch diameter pipe. So you're gonna have to cut it down. This is six inch diameter Dura Plus, which is gonna use our last shortest tab. So we'll use our tin snips here and we'll just trim this off. Now as you install this, the tab slides right in. You need to make it so it comes out the other side. There you go. Put that all the way in. Nice and tight. And then you're just going to pull that tab up and peel it back to lock your storm collar in place. Push it down so it's flat against your flashing. And get your silicone back out. And now we're going to run a bead all the way around the top of that flashing to make sure that it's good and sealed so no water can drip down the pipe and into our attic.